Right guys, welcome back to statistical testing. This is video two out of three, and in this video we are gonna look at choosing a statistical test, possibly one of the most common statistical tests question in an exam. If you haven't watched video one yet, then I am gonna put the link up on the top of the screen for you now, so you can just go ahead and watch that if you want to. And if you've already seen this video and you wanna jump onto the sign test, which is video three, that video will also be appearing at the top of your screen now, so you can just go ahead and click it if you want to. So like I said, this is all about choosing a appropriate statistical test. And in A-level psychology, there are eight statistical tests that you need to know. Now, don't worry, you won't ever have to calculate seven of them. One of them you may have to calculate, but video three will cover all of that, and it is really, really easy. Now, even though you don't need to calculate most of them, you do need to know when to use them, and that is what we are gonna have a look at in this video. Choosing a statistical test relies on various pieces of information, and most of these pieces of information will be given in the question. Even if it's not given really explicitly, with a little bit of detective work, you should be able to work out everything that you need in order to choose an appropriate statistical test. Those pieces of information are whether your study is a test of difference or a correlation, what the design of your study is, and also what level of measurement is being used in your study. The first two bits are old news. You already know this, or at least it should be fairly familiar to you. So first off, is your study a test of difference or a correlation? Now that should be obvious from the wording of the hypothesis or at least from the information that you're given about the study. So if your study is looking for a relationship between two variables or if your study is looking for an association between two variables, then you are looking at a correlational piece of research. Whereas if you are looking at the difference between two groups, for example, then you are looking at a test of difference. Okay, so that should be fairly straightforward to work out. The test design should also be fairly simple to work out because the test design effectively is asking you about the experimental design of the research. We're just gonna call it something different. So you have an unrelated design and you have a related design. But all that means is independent groups which is unrelated because the participants are completely different in both conditions, so they are technically unrelated, or you're using a repeated measures or a matched pairs design, in which case the design would be related because the participants are in some way similar to each other. In a repeated measures design, the participants are the same people, so they are sort of similar, you could say. Um, and in a matched pairs, they are matched based on some kind of characteristic. So again, they are similar to each other and we're gonna call that related, okay? So whether it is related or unrelated wholly depends on the experimental design that is being used in that particular study, okay? And experimental designs are old news. Now the final bit of information that you need, and this is the new bit for this video, is what level of measurement is being used. Now levels of measurement refer effectively to what type of data is being used. However, we're not looking at qualitative or quantitative or primary or secondary, we're looking at three new types of data that quantitative data can be classified as. So we have nominal data, ordinal data, or interval data, and they all mean something different. So nominal data is categorical data, okay? So it means that people exist in either one category or another, but they can't exist in more than one. So things like if you were to ask people what their favorite dessert is, they would exist in one category. Or smokers versus non-smoker, you either are a smoker or you are a non-smoker, so you can only exist in one category. Or sex, again, categorical. It's what's known as discrete data. And that means that you can only be in one category, you can't be in two. Ordinal data, on the other hand, is data that can be ordered in some way. So for example, if you were gonna give somebody a rating scale, 
rate your enjoyment of X on a scale of 1 to 10, then that would be ordinal because you can order them in terms of you know who enjoyed something the most all the way to who enjoyed something the least. The problem with ordinal data, however, is that it is subjective because there's no equal intervals between the values. So if somebody says my enjoyment of that was 2 out of 10, whereas somebody else says my enjoyment of that was 4 out of 10, because 2 out of 10 and 4 out of 10 is subjective, I can't turn around and say that person enjoyed it twice as much as the other person because actually we have no concept of what a 4 out of 10 or a 2 out of 10 actually is. So there's no equal intervals between the values, but the data can be ordered if I want it to be. And then finally, interval data is data that's based on numerical scales. So things like weight, size, scores, or speed. Okay, so they are objective, well-established scales. There are equal intervals between each value. So I can say that somebody who got 50% did twice as well as somebody who got 25%. That's well established. It is objective. There's no arguing with it. Okay, so it is the most sophisticated form of data that you can get. Okay, so those are your three new types of data. Those are your three levels of measurement. And we'll have a look at how those fit into picking a statistical test in a second. And we'll also have a look at a couple of examples of those so that you can see what I mean. So that brings us on to actually choosing the test. And there is no easy way to do this. You will just have to learn it. Okay, so this is your table that I would suggest that you learn. Okay, there's a lot of different ways in which you can do this. However, this for me is the easiest way to do it. You have your levels of measurement down the side. You've got your nominal, ordinal, interval. They are obviously in order of sophistication. Nominal is the least sophisticated and interval is the most sophisticated. I appreciate the interval should be at the top, but it is not. So, you know, and then along the top, you have your titles. So these are the things that we were talking about before. You have a test of difference, and a test of difference can be either unrelated or related. Make sure you get them the right way around. Unrelated comes first and then related. And then at the end, you have a test of correlation or association. Those can't be related or unrelated because you don't have experimental designs in correlational research. And then you have to learn which statistical test comes where. Okay, and there is a nice little mnemonic for you to learn if you like that kind of thing. So you have carrots should come mashed with swede under roast potatoes. If you can remember that mnemonic, then that will tell you which statistical test comes where. Okay, so carrots is your chi-squared, should is your sine test, come is chi-squared again, mashed, man Whitney, and so on, and so on. Now, you will not be given this table in the exam, okay? This is something that you are going to have to learn, okay? So it is going to take a little bit of time just to kind of remember what the names of the statistical tests are, but hopefully the mnemonic should help you with whereabouts they come in the table. My big bit of advice for this would be to just take a little bit of time write it out on a piece of paper or scribble it down on a table or wherever, it doesn't really matter, and then rub it off or throw the piece of paper in the bin and then do it again and again and again. And once you've done it a couple of times, you will be fine and it isn't something that you'll easily forget. Obviously, when you get to an exam as well, if you do get a question like this, the first thing that you could do is you could write this table out on the piece of paper. That's up to you, but then at least you have it there and you can use it if you need to. Now, let's have a look at a couple of examples. Um, if you want, you can pause the video and try and work out the statistical test for yourself, or you can just let me give you the answers. It's up to you. So Charlotte and Summer were arguing about which of them is better at psychology. They looked at their psychology marks in percent over the year and calculated a mean and a standard deviation. So if you want to pause it, go ahead. I'm going to go through the answer. So that is quite clearly a test of difference. It is also unrelated because Charlotte and Summer are 
effectively in two different groups. And it is interval data because they are looking at percentages and they're also calculated a mean and a standard deviation, which kind of also tells you that it's interval data. And that means that they are going to use a unrelated t-test. Let's have a look at another one. So Susan wanted to find out what the most popular makeup brand was. She asked the participants to identify their favorite out of Rimmel, Mac, and Benefit. And then she calculated the total number for each brand. So like I said, pause it if you want. Um, but that is also a test of difference. It's also an unrelated design. Um, and it is nominal data because they are in categories, which means that they're going to use a chi-squared. Okay, I've just got two more for you. So Phoebe wanted to find out whether there was a correlation between temperature and aggression. She accessed a remote for the heating device at her school and covertly observed her class as she increased the temperature. She gave each person in a class an aggression score between 0 and 10 every time she increased the temperature by 5. Okay, so this one is a test of correlation because she wants to find out whether there's a correlation. It's ordinal data because she's giving them an aggression score. Now this one is a little bit tricky because they are not measuring the temperature. Okay, if they were measuring the temperature, then it would be interval data. What they are actually measuring is an aggression score, which is not something that's interval, it's something that's ordinal. Okay, so because it's a test of association and it's ordinal data, then for that one, we are going to be using Spearman's row. Okay, and then the final one, Mr. Cartledge wants to find out whether people with depression would improve after a six-week course of CBT. So this is our example from video one. I've given you a little bit more detail for this. So he asked participants to complete Beck's depression inventory before and after the six-week course of treatment. And then he analyzed the results to see if anyone had improved. Okay, so for this one, again, it's a little bit tricky. It is a test of difference and it's a related design because everyone um, is the same participant and it is nominal data. Now, the reason it's nominal is because I'm not measuring how much they improved by. My only interest is, have they improved or have they not improved? Okay, so that makes it nominal data because they either have or they haven't. And that means that we're using the sign test. So there are loads and loads of examples of this and effectively this is exactly what it's going to look like in an exam. So my big message to you is learn the table. Okay, if you can get that table down, it will help you to no end and it will be really good for you in the exam. And if you can learn that table as well, then you will breeze through every single statistical test question that comes up. And just to point out to you that in an exam, it will look very, very similar to the ones we've just done. Here is a question from a couple of years ago. And like you can see, it says, which statistical test should be used to calculate whether there is a significant difference in reported smoking behavior between the two surveys? Give three reasons for your answer. And this is a four mark question. Okay, so feel free to work it out for yourself. However, the answer is, it's nominal data because they either smoked or they didn't smoke. It is a test of difference and it is an unrelated design because all the people are unrelated or not similar because it's always different people. Okay, for that reason, it is a chi-squared test that needs to be used. Okay, so there are your four marks. Okay, so that is the end of the video and I hope it has all made sense. Remember to learn the table because it will be really valuable for your exam and I hope this whole thing has been useful. The link to video three should be on your screen now, so go ahead and check that out if you need to, where we're gonna be learning about how to calculate the sign test. Thank you very much for listening, and if you have any questions, please pop them in the comment section below. Thank you.